my own hometown. Stranger. Yeah. Howdy, folks. Little Johnny. <clears throat> Friday afternoon. So it's time for another Five on Friday. Today, uh, we've got a little bit of support from uh, Chivas Regal. Uh, the extra blend. What I want to have a bit of a chat about today was uh, hydrometers. Uh, and I would show you my hydrometer, except I broke it uh, about a week ago. I do have my plastic one that came with my Cooper's kit um, many, many moons ago when I bought one of the kits for the fermenter. I had a plastic one. But by and large, when you're talking hydrometers, we're talking you know, glass quality you know, lab equipment, um, something that's reasonably accurate. Um, and a, and it's, these are quite often items which throw up a little bit of um, doubt for new brewers. They're not sure how to use them, when they should use them, and exactly what it is that the hydrometer is even, even showing. So, effectively, a hydrometer is just simply a tool which measures the amount of undissolved sugar, so dissolved sugar, in the liquid, in this case, water. So we're measuring how much sugar there is in the liquid, and what that allows us to do is by having a reading at the start of the brew and a reading at the end of the brew when it's finished fermenting, we can work out how much alcohol has been made. The difference, that's, you know, calculations. So the hydrometer for the home brewer is a fairly um, important tool but not just for measuring the alcohol, it also gives you a very clear indication of whether um, your fermentation has stopped, has, has completed. Um, so it, it works two prongs, and that's why it's important to, you know, to get used to using it and knowing how to, how to use it and how to read it. Now, your hydrometer will come with a tube of some kind. Uh, normally you, you buy one, they come in, all, in a plastic tube which you can uh, then use to take your samples in and, and measure in. Now we're not going to muck around doing this. This is an instruction video. It's just an overview. Um, now hydrometers work off water being at a certain temperature. And it's normally about 20 degrees, and it will vary from hydrometer to hydrometer. It's normally marked on them, so it's normally 15 or 20. And there's realistically only one point difference between the two. So even if your hydrometer's you're not sure, it's not going to make a hell of a lot of difference. The main thing with the hydrometer is that your readings are taken at relatively regular standard sort of temperatures uh, as much as possible. And that will help you to get um, a more consistent reading. Now the first thing you want to do when you get your hydrometer, get your tube, three quarters fill it with just plain old tap water. Let it sit at room temperature for about an hour so it equalises, then take your reading. Now, at that point, there's discussion about whether you should read from the top of the uh, meniscus or under the meniscus. And if we remember back to science school, that's the little bubble type things at the top of any liquid. Now, again, it doesn't particularly matter where you read it, as long as you consistently read from that point, you will get the right result. You may not get exactly the right reading, but you'll get the right result. Okay. Um, and again, that will vary from hydro to hydro, exactly where that reading is, and it should show you on the sheet that comes with them. If it doesn't, I always just read off the top one. Um, my reason it's just easier to read. And from my experience, it, does, it tends to be closer to the numbers you're expecting to get. So, once you've, had, you, you've done that, Calibration, so you know where it is. So it should read 1.000. If it reads anything different from that, then you need to allow for that in any future readings. This one has an example in plain white, plain double tap water reads 1.006. So I know any reading I take on that, I need to add that six points um, to allow for where it actually is. But you need to, so you need to do that all the way across. So check your check your hydrometer first. Then what you want to do 
you want to do your regular. So first, before you put your yeast in, as soon as you finish batching your batch up, you've got him going, take a reading. Mark that down on your notes. 108.42, 46, 48, 97 if you're doing something bloody big. Yeah, whatever it is, write it down. Then after, you know, five to seven days, depending on how long you sort of want to be, around the time where your fermentation has finished or expecting it to be finished, take another sample and take another reading and write that down. Two days later, take another reading. Now, if those readings are the same, then your fermentation is finished. If the second one is a bit lower than the first one, let it go another 20, 24 hours, take another one. And keep doing that until you get those two readings that are stable. Um, that is counting on being in, in, in the rough figure that you should be. So if you're working off a recipe, recipe, you should have a rough number that you're aiming for. As long as you're in that sort of range, then you're looking pretty good. Um, those numbers will vary depending on yeast and that's other stuff. Okay. From those figures, by taking the first figure and deducting the last figure, you end up with the amount of sugar that you've actually used. Now, quite simply, by taking that that reading, so I'll say it's um. Yeah, you, know, you started at 10.40, you dropped down to 10.10, you've lost 30 points. So that 30 is the figure you work off. You times that by 0.134, which is a roundabout figure, and that will calculate roughly what your alcohol is. So at 30, it's around 4%. Um, to that, you'll then add your priming. If, you, if you're priming with sugar, you'll add you know, 0.3 to 0.5, depending on your sugar level. Um, but that's how simple it is. It doesn't have to be anything difficult. You don't need to take readings every day. You don't need to take readings you know, all the way through. Um, I will, if I'm doing testing and I'm comparing stuff just to, to see how a fermentation profile varies from one, um, so say from one yeast to another. Uh, but generally, let it go five days, seven days. Then do that check and then take a couple of checks after that. Um, and you're soon going to go, okay, we're very finished. Uh, if it's seriously higher than what you're expecting, then there's issues. That's other stuff you need to look at. We're not going into that today. Well, so that's it. Start two at the end, three if need be, and use, keep those numbers. Write them down and use those to work out your ABV. So that's it. It doesn't matter if you've got this fella, you know, $20 job, or you're going to actually have to spend 70 or 80 bucks on a really high quality hydro. Uh, they're all going to do the same job and they're all going to give you the same sort of result. Okay, so hydrometers, that's it. Any questions, stick them down the bottom, hit the subscribe button if you haven't already so we can catch up every Friday and everything in between. So until I see you again, we're playing around with some beer, we're talking beer, we're making beer. Good brewing.